Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Murfreesboro.com podcast. We appreciate you tuning in as always. And we have a full house today uh, with us. And actually, I skipped a part. I'm John, your host. There we go. Sorry, back it up a little bit. <laughs> and so uh, we have Scott on the far side over there. We have the glorious one, Miss Gloria, over here. And James, yes. all from the journey home. Yes. Here in Murfreesboro, yes. right? And then, um, if you don't mind, Mr. James, uh, you're... Like what you do with your roles with the, you're a volunteer and board member, correct? Volunteer and board member. I, um, <clears throat> we serve in the cafe once a month on mm-hmm. the fourth Sunday of the month. I lead a group there who, who serves in the kitchen uh, and we serve about a hundred people. Oh, wow. That every Sunday. Okay. So, yeah. I gotcha. Uh, Ms. Gloria, what, what do you do over there? I am a volunteer and a board member as well. And I just do whatever they ask me to oh, do. Oh, that's wonderful. <laughs> That's that's Servant why you are leader. That's why yes. you're the glorious one. That's right. Yes. And side note for those watching and tuning in, you were also the grand marshal in the Christmas parade. Oh yes, that that's was a, so fun. Oh, it yeah. was electric in this community. Oh, I know, right? And I'm so honored. I know that's so. I love the Christmas parade every year. We put the monster truck in it and drive it, and it's so fun. And the kids, their eyes. Oh, I know. The magic in their eyes. Mm-hmm. Oh, it was. It's quite an honor for me oh yeah i can only imagine that's awesome <laughs> well congratulations on that yeah. it, it was, was cold. good and cold yes, yes. But, but their mm-hmm. spirit the heart yes. of a yeah. christmas parade <clears throat> changes everything it does yes <laughs> yeah was it last year or the year before when it was like really really cold uh-huh. and but it didn't matter <laughs> it people did came out matter. by the thousands and you like you said you could just feel it in the yes. air exactly. it was great exactly awesome and then we have mr scott your executive director Correct? I am. I'm Aha. the, I'm the founder. Um, nice. I'm the, the person that sort of started this journey about 20 years ago for me. No way. Okay. And, um, and, and have, have been blessed to have such wonderful folks in the community and yeah. just the community itself yeah. coming together to, you know, to help other people in crisis. Oh, that's wonderful. Well, actually, if, if I didn't know you started 20 years ago. That's awesome. If, if you don't mind, for those watching and listening, let's kind of touch on just the journey home and your – what. Why did you want to start it? What was the... Sure. Um, for me, it was part of my faith journey. Okay. Um, when I was a high school student back in 1982, mm-hmm. um, I, I had an experience with God that uh, just felt like God was calling me to serve um, people in the community that were struggling both physically and spiritually. Mm-hmm. Had no idea what that meant. Okay. Um, and, uh, but shared it you know, with others uh, in, in my church, in my family. Uh, and even other folks in business, uh, you know, as a, as a high school student, a lot of times we have things put in front of us and we have no idea what that really means right. or, you know, so I, uh, I went on to college and, and was in the business world, for-profit business world for a long time. Mm-hmm. And some 22 years later, um, I came under conviction that now was the time and now was the place. All right. Uh, I'm from Memphis originally, but I've been here in Murfreesboro for gosh, a little over 30 years now. And, um, you know, I came under conviction uh, back in 2004 that now mm-hmm. was the time to, to start this journey. And, and for me, not being a person uh, trained in serving others or church work or social psych or social work or anything like that, you know, I had to go and, and get prepared uh, yeah. to, to do this work that, um, that I felt like God put in front of me and uh, just had been blessed, went back and took some additional coursework over at the university and um, got a bunch of folks together uh, that just wanted to come and serve others. Nice. And uh, so from there, what's mm-hmm. now the Journey Home was born in 2006, and and we've been uh, been working with our community ever since. All right. So so it took 22 years, and then it's been open for 20 years. So what was that defining? Do you remember the moment, the light bulb, where you're like, "All right, I'm doing this." What was uh, that? Yes. So. Um, I was in the restaurant equipment business, parts and service business, okay. prior to uh, doing this, and I was a um, an area director for Ecolab. We had sold our small business, mm-hmm. and, and uh, eventually Ecolab had acquired that. And so uh, my territory covered five states, and um, I was actually in Memphis, uh, sitting on I-240 between Summer Avenue and Walnut Grove, right. and because uh, that's where one of my offices was. Gotcha. And uh, I was sitting in traffic, stuck, and I just had this this moment that uh, in my spirit, I, I knew that that God was um, saying, "Hey, Scott, this thing we've been talking about for twenty mm-hmm. some years, now's the time. I need you to make a choice about that." Wow! And um, okay. so I came back. Yeah, and, I just got goosebumps. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> you know, I, I, my my wife and I were intentional about praying about it mm-hmm. because the one thing I knew was that I could not continue to to work 
in my full-time capacity and, and do this ministry. And so I had to make some choices. And um, so after some, some prayer and time, you know, really uh, meditating on that, then um, chose to, to take that leap of faith. And, and uh, you know, God's been ever-present in the whole process. That's wonderful. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Well, how about you, Miss Gloria? What was your moment of getting involved? In well, life? for me, it's been my lifestyle Mm -hmm. Growing up here in Murfreesboro, mm -hmm. and I've had amazing parents and role models in mm -hmm. my life, and that's what we've done. Wow, okay. So it's been a part of our legacy from our family. That's fantastic. And I've just, I, I really celebrate the opportunity. And I believe, Scott, when I first met you, I was serving as assistant to the president at MTSU, right. mm -hmm. and you invited me over to the Journey Home facility and gave me a tour. Mm -hmm. There you gave me a tour to the clothes closet and then the cafeteria at lunchtime, and I just immediately embraced the mission mm -hmm. and the compassion that he had for Journey Home, so uh, it's been total buy-in, and I'm grateful to be a part of the board. Mm. Wow. Yeah. I That's... love, I love working with the members of this community, but particularly the board of directors here. So much compassion for who we are as a community. Wow, mm -hmm. that's wonderful. Well, how about you, Mr. James? For me, I, I work in, I own a real estate investment mm -hmm. company. And so for me, it, I, I see how our community is changing. This mm -hmm. is where I grew up. I've always been, I've always had a, a heart to serve people. Mm -hmm. And I have in our community for many years. But as a, an investor, I see how we contribute to some of the problems. Okay. Um, because we 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 come into and, and we take houses that are currently affordable, mm -hmm. but we increase the values of those through renovations mm -hmm. and things like that, which only makes affordable housing less of an opportunity. So I right. know that part of what I'm doing contributes to the problem. So I felt like as as my company, we needed to figure out how we could be a part of the solution. How can we find ways? to give back and help with the people who are struggling with affordable housing and, and that are being forced into a homeless situation. Gotcha. And so I, I started reaching out. I didn't know about the journey home mm -hmm. at that time. And I thought, man, this looks like a great opportunity. So as I got plugged in, I'm like, these are wonderful people. Yeah. They have such a heart to serve in our community, but nobody knows, mm -hmm. nobody knows about, or, or there's very few people who know yeah. what Scott has been doing and the passion mm -hmm. he's had for all of these years. And so I'm like, I've got to help spread that message. Mm -hmm. I've got to do my part to help other people that I know in our community mm -hmm. to shine a light on what the journey home is doing. Mm -hmm. So for me, that was, that was the moment. Yeah. Oh, wow. You know, one, <clears throat> one unique quality that I bring to uh, the equation is this. My parents grew up in the uh, community of Journey Homes. Okay. Then it was called the Bottoms. Now we mm -hmm. refer to it mm -hmm. as Historic Bottoms. Gotcha. So when I talk to my siblings about that, as first and second generation college graduates, we the reality for us is we were one generation removed from abject poverty. Wow. Okay. That's that's. Uh, an eye opener yeah, for us. We need to have you back on oh again by yourself and talk about <laughs> oh, that. Wow. Yeah, you can yeah. share some stories. We've, sure. we've had some amazing stories that wow. our parents have told us. Oh, I could pick your brain for right hours. Right there on Walnut <laughs> Street wow, is no where kidding. our family started. Wow. Uh -huh. Okay. All right. Well, well, about the, the journey home, you know, a lot of times talking to people I hear about, you know, like, oh, they give out meals, right? Well, they do a whole lot more than that, right? You got right. a bunch of different programs. So if you don't mind, kind of touch on some of the programs for everybody real quick on what all you do. Sure, be glad to do that. And you're right. Mm -hmm. Most everyone is familiar with the Community Cafe. Yep. Uh, and that's been going strong for, for um, a long time. Mm -hmm. um, however, what people are not as familiar with um, is the fact that we house people. 
mm-hmm. you know, um, housing is really the, the uh, key to making everything else work. Uh, it is hard to get a job and hold a job if you hadn't got a roof over your head and a place to sleep at night. You know, it is hard to maintain your health or mental health. Um, try, try getting sober or clean on the streets. You know, yeah, okay. Let yeah. me just tell you the, the the chaos of the streets wins almost every time, wow. and so housing is a a critical element. Really, we talk about a, a trinity uh, of mm-hmm. services that make it work, and that's housing, health in a very broad sense, and income. You know, work or or having income mm-hmm. to be able to support yourself, and really none of those things can exist apart from each other. Mm-hmm. They have to exist together. And so for us, um, we have each year, um, we work with, uh, you know, well over a hundred households, just folks that are on the streets that don't have housing, mm-hmm. helping them get into housing, but not just to locate and move into housing, but then to maintain that housing. So we're staying with them. You know, you it, it may be, you know, 50 or 75 actual move-ins that year, but we're working with folks for, for say a year, mm-hmm. you know, uh, just so that they can get established and they can maintain that moving mm-hmm. forward. Um, there are other things. We, we have a, a health care clinic uh, at the okay. Journey Home uh, two yeah. days a week. And, um, you know, just having access to health care, um, having access to mental health care, mm-hmm. um, having counselors that will sit down and work with you, planning and helping you uh, set goals yeah. and create a strategy to achieve those goals, you know, really – more than anything else, to, to help you understand that that you have value, that, that you're important, that you matter, yeah. you know. Because, you know, it's one thing to, to, to bring together resources, and, man, resources are really important. Mm-hmm. We have to have housing and meals and showers and clothing and mm-hmm. a place to do your laundry and people to talk to and, you know, a safe place to be. We think about, you know, it was just below zero a few days oh, just a few yeah. weeks ago. Yeah. So we just, you know, we uprooted our whole operation and moved it to the gym at First Baptist Church. Really? We've got so okay. many wonderful faith communities that are partners uh, in this and businesses and, and just individuals. We live in a blessed community Mm -hmm. and we live in a place where people care. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I I hope that, that at least in my lifetime, I never see that change, you know, but, um, but it's one of the things that, that we um, have to sort of guard against as Mm -hmm. we grow and and people come in that aren't as connected uh, to the, the fabric of who we once were. And I think James, you just brought that up. You know, is that we have to share the the word with people and invite them to mm-hmm. come be part right. of a way to care for others. Mm-hmm. Um, so through all these different programs, we operate. I think it's twenty nine homes and apartments uh, throughout the community okay. where we work with families with children mm-hmm. um, and individuals, but usually for a longer period of time, say between a year and two years, really helping them get their feet back under them. You know, they That's are. Great. You know they're paying rent. They're they're learning how to mm-hmm. do house and family and all those things. And really, as they move on from there, then then they're they're in a place where they they can mm-hmm. take the ball and run with it. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm just curious. On the, this is probably a big number, I'd imagine. But over the the 20 years plus that you've been doing this, like, do you keep track of how many people that you? Uh, and it, I know that's kind of hard to say because, like you said, you, a family may come in of you know, three, four, five, you know, or something that needs some help. But I can imagine you've helped out quite a few people. You know, I don't know if we, if I can give you any numbers yeah. right off the top of my head for yeah. that entire period of time. Yeah, I have one year you of know. your stats and I'm looking at yeah. them. I'm like, for so, 20 years, that's tens of thousands of people if you just law of averages here. And I mean, that's so many people. There there are a lot of people that have come through those doors. Dang. And, um, you know, some we were able to work with for, a short period of time and Mm -hmm. help them get get things moving in the right direction we never hear from them again except they call us and say hey just wanted you to know we're we're doing great you know and then there are others that we've worked with for almost the whole time you know this is our 18th year of officially being open and there are some folks that we work with today um, because they need that support that Mm -hmm. that external support um, in order to to continue mm-hmm. on and, and uh, be part of our community. That's got to be incredibly rewarding for all of you, though. Like well, if somebody even calls when up. you look at 15 to 18 loads of laundry per day, oh, wow. when you multiply that by 350, 
56 days in a year. Can you imagine? And I'm washing maybe three loads a week, and I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> I do one to two, and I'm exhausted. What are you talking about? <laughs> and something that Scott mentioned in a meeting that we were recently at that yeah. was kind of eye-opening to me is how the demographics have changed since mm-hmm. he started. Sure. Oh, yeah. It was predominantly men, and now we're seeing more and more women yeah. who are children. struggling with homelessness and oh, children. Really? Yeah. Oh, no. Yes. So one of the oldest programs we have at, at the Journey Home is called Coldest Nights. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it is a cold weather shelter that we operate uh, from the middle of November through the middle of March. And it's really for our unsheltered adults in the community mm-hmm. uh, on nights when it's going to be below freezing. And, you know, they could they could have health and safety issues due to exposure. Oh, yeah. And, you know, today usually we serve about two to 300 unique individuals every year. Um, and about, uh, about 30% of those are women now. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and let me tell you, a, a more staggering number is that a full quarter of those are over 55 years of age. Oh, gosh. And we have, I, I can't even tell you how many 60, 60-something-year-old, 70-something-year-old men and women we have unsheltered uh, and that, that have nowhere to be. And let me tell oh, you, for, for me, that's, uh, and especially if you've been, Dealing, you know, if you've been on the streets for a while, being 55 is like being 65 anyway. Mm-hmm. But being, you know, 70 is like being 80. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, that to me, it, we just got to be better. You know, yeah. uh, we do live in a wonderful community, but it's a community that, that, that has to do more. You know, we, we have some issues. And if we want to, um, you know, if we want those issues to, to be solved, mm-hmm. we're going to have to be intentional. We're going to have to come together. And, and we're going to have to implement good solutions. When you, when you say things like, as a community, we have to do more. Yes. What kind of does that encompass, the more part? What you know, you um, homelessness is a sort of a complex issue. Mm-hmm. And, and there are a lot of different causes of homelessness. James just mentioned a minute ago, housing affordability. Um, mm-hmm. Housing affordability is a, is a real uh, significant issue in our community. Um, but also, um, you know, access to education, to health, to health care, to mm-hmm. mental health care, um, supporting the family, that which our churches do and our faith communities, uh, particularly bringing, um, bringing to bear the importance mm-hmm. of the family, of mom and dad raising their kids together, mm-hmm. and, uh, and those children getting the support. That's how you break the generations mm-hmm. uh, of, of poverty and the generations of homelessness. You know, one of the, uh, both of our school systems, the Rutherford County School System and the Murfreesboro City School System, have federally funded programs to work with homeless students, mm-hmm. students experiencing homelessness. And, you know, last year, I don't have the numbers for this year. We're still in progress. Mm-hmm. But last year, between those two systems, they enrolled almost almost 2,000 students, almost 2,000 students. That does not include mom or dad. That does not include non-school age siblings. Uh, We know that number is easily four to 5,000 people. That's just people living in families with children. In fact, last year, uh, we're still putting together 2023's numbers, but in 2022, Mm -hmm. our our, um, people asking for assistance with homeless services and housing assistance and basic needs resources, the number of people living in families with children exceeded the number of uh, individual, you know, adult-only families yeah. for the first time ever. Oh, my gosh. And, and that's that's our future, guys. You know, that's mm-hmm. th- those children are where we, we need to invest in breaking those cycles. Yeah. And that's a key, Scott, I think, because if we could focus on – just raising the awareness Mm -hmm. that these issues are really critical and it impacts lives. So it's the awareness piece, but it also is the access Mm -hmm. piece in terms of access to resources such as Journey Home. Mm -hmm. And because you don't want this to become their reality as a lifestyle Mm -hmm. because it impacts other generations. So you have awareness, you have access. And for us, it's the accountability. Mm -hmm. We were created to serve. Mm -hmm. And I just believe 
we're held accountable for that. Mm -hmm. So we cannot afford to um, ignore it. And then it's the action piece. Mm -hmm. How do you mobilize the resources that we have to benefit other people? Mm -hmm. And I just think it all works together, but I celebrate his vision. Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, my. And I would say, too, John, mm -hmm. on the part of how people can help, you know, we just come through the Christmas holiday season, mm -hmm. and it amazed me, you know, when you're pulling up to a traffic light, and, of course, at this time, all all the people come out of the mm -hmm. woodworks that are looking to get handouts, you know, so yeah, they're standing you. everywhere. And I see all of these people who think they're helping by handing money out. That's not helping the problem. Mm -hmm. That's not – some of those people probably don't even live in our county. <laughs> they're you. probably not even truly homeless or in need. I got um, you. And so if people, instead of handing that money out, if they would donate the money to the Journey Home, okay. who is actually – making a difference mm -hmm. who is managing those resources mm -hmm. and, and and you're directing those resources to where there are genuine needs mm -hmm. but just handing money out even churches sometimes yeah you know they hand money out to uh people who come and say can you put us in, up in a hotel at night mm -hmm. well if those churches would direct the funding to the journey home I gotcha. then they know we are genuinely helping the problem yeah. instead of just being scammed by somebody who may or may not truly be in need I got you. Yeah. Dang. Okay. Well, in, in that case, can they donate on the website or how can, how can people reach out and donate? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Our website is lovegodservepeople.org. Mm -hmm. And um, right on the homepage, uh, there's an, an opportunity to donate. People can set that up as a recurring donation. They can do it, uh, uh, make a direct gift. They can set it up from their bank account or mm -hmm. credit card. Or there, okay. there are all kinds of ways to do that. All right. Um, so that's right on the website. Okay. And then one more thing, if you don't mind, I wanted to touch on the clothes closet. Just, sure. Can you just go into a little more detail on that one? Yes. Um, so, man, from the very beginning, we, we recognized that, uh, you know, it is hard to feel good about yourself mm -hmm. if you can't take a shower, put on some fresh clothes. Mm -hmm. You know, um, when you don't have really a place to keep your stuff very, very much, mm -hmm. um, things like underwear and socks and, yeah. and you know, pair of jeans. Th those are really precious commodities. And so we, we receive uh, donated clothing. Uh, mm -hmm. For us, mainly, we focus on casual uh, workwear, day-to-day -day wear, okay. um, not, not fancy stuff, not church clothes, not going to a professional interview type mm -hmm. stuff. Most of the folks we work with, hey, they're working, um, you know, service jobs and that mm -hmm. kind of thing. So when they're going in, nice polo shirt and a pair, pair of jeans is a great thing to interview in. You know? All right, there you go. And so um, that's the, the type of, of mm -hmm. materials we have down in the clothes closet. But, you know, it really changes the way you feel about yourself. Oh, yeah. When you can present yourself to others. Most people who are really experiencing crisis, they don't want you to know. Yeah. You know, they're yeah, shame tied to that, and yeah. they don't want you to know they're in trouble or, or having a crisis. So if they can, you know, fix themselves up and go out and participate in community and, mm -hmm. and work and that kind of thing, that's what they want to do, and it helps make them feel valuable. Yeah. Oh, that's wonderful. I love that. Especially uh, imagine being a youth in today's society, and everything initially is based upon appearance. Sure. So when you're sitting in a classroom on a daily basis and, and you worry about your appearance, mm -hmm. your cleanliness, that puts a lot of pressure on a child. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm just grateful that we have that concept of the clothes closet where people can come yeah. and, and take care of their, their needs, their mm -hmm. physical yeah. needs. How, how can people donate to it? Yeah. You can bring uh, bring materials to our center at 308 West Castle Street mm -hmm. during our normal operating hours, which would be 7 in the morning to 3 in the afternoon during okay. the week. Um, that's the best way. Okay. Awesome. Well, moving forward, jump, jump a little bit, 2024. Mm -hmm. So what's your glorious one over here? Okay. <laughs> All right. Oh, my. Oh. I love <laughs> celebrating. So mm -hmm. we're, we're looking forward mm -hmm. to hosting a grand event. It's our inaugural Journey 24 luncheon. Mm -hmm. And hopefully, 
if we can get this one right, and I'm going to mm-hmm. take responsibility, All right. it will continue as a signature event. All right. So on Monday, March 4, mm-hmm. which is spring break for the MTSU community, mm-hmm. we have invited our dear, dear friends and residents of Murfreesboro and Rutherford County and beyond to come and celebrate with us. Mm -hmm. The whole concept is not just fundraising. Mm -hmm. We're in the business of friend raising. So we're we're looking forward to recruiting Mm -hmm. new friends, reconnecting, and revitalizing our previous relationships with others. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we're breaking bread together and accomplishing a goal Mm -hmm. to assist our neighbors who are in crisis. Mm -hmm. Love thy neighbor, but help them at the same time. Oh, that's wonderful. So, yeah. So at 1130, we're going to open the doors. It's going to be a festive uh, environment. Uh, and we will be fellowshipping, we will be, uh, we'll partake in great food, and we'll have fun reconnecting with each other. Mm-hmm. Hopefully, spring is in the air. All right. So we've got something to present to the community mm-hmm. in sharing the vision of Journey Homes and also making sure that people understand the operation Mm -hmm. of an initiative such as Journey Home needs support, funding. We need human capital Mm -hmm. as well as the fiscal piece. So I'll be recruiting volunteers. We need table hosts. Okay. So you may even consider serving (laughs) with (laughs) all your charisma, serving (laughs) as a table host and inviting nine of your best Mm -hmm. friends all right. To participate and make a commitment mm-hmm. to give. And we've broken it down into pieces over a year. Mm-hmm. So if you decide you want to contribute your Starbucks money mm-hmm. for uh, on a monthly basis mm-hmm. for a year, imagine how much that adds up. Oh, for sure. If you give $10 mm-hmm. a, a week yeah. or $10 a month, mm-hmm. We are receptive to mm-hmm. that. Oh, every little bit helps in that. Every yeah, little yeah. bit helps. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hey, if you need service, hey, let, that would be fun. I, I used to serve tables in college for a long time, so I, I can do that for you if you want. <laughs> I, I did that, fun. too, for four years. Did you? Me, too. J-U-B, <laughs> I worked with Aramark You worked at J-U-B? a student. No way. Oh, my gosh. That's funny. <laughs> but <clears throat> you and your wife could serve as a table host for us, and then... That's eight friends mm-hmm. that you'll invite. Oh, that'd be fun. Mm-hmm. No, see, we love that sort of stuff. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, there you go. You got one right there. So. Uh, All right. <laughs> tell them about the location and, and uh, where, where it will be. Okay. MTSU campus. We're going to be on the MTSU campus. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you don't have to worry about parking because, as I said, it's spring break week. Spring break. All right. And it's the first day of the spring break week. Okay. We'll be in the Student Union Building. That's the yep, new one. The new one. Gotcha. And we'll be in the ballroom <clears throat> of the Student Union Building All right. from 1130 to 1 o'clock. Okay. So we, would, we extend an invitation to all of our members of our community mm-hmm. to come and support us. All right. All right, and we'll post about that uh, again as we get closer Please to time, do. too. So we'll help out with that. Not a problem. <laughs> we don't want to let the glorious one down. <laughs> no, that's right. Can't let her down. No way. That's right. That's right. <laughs> but as, as there's food involved, too, we, we yes. need to know that, exactly. that you're coming. That's you right. Know? Uh-huh. So, uh, so we've got, we'll get all that worked out yep. and posted, and, right. and yep. everyone will know what to do. Oh, yeah, there. we'll take care of that. Yeah, no worries about that. <laughs> and then, uh, so that's one great event, and then we got another one. Yes, so so this is more for our operations and volunteer side. Mm -hmm. And so we're also, uh, we didn't touch on this earlier, Mm -hmm. but we are in the middle of a capital campaign. Mm -hmm. So we're uh, in the process, which Scott could go back to that, um, to talk about the new building that is coming. And thank you for that wonderful segue, by the way. I appreciate <laughs> it. Thank you. <laughs> you beat uh, me to it. All right. Yeah, sorry. No, no, no. And, that's uh, fantastic. Good. Keep going. <laughs> but uh, so I have uh, partnered with my church, to, which is Center Point Apostolic mm-hmm. Church. We're hosting an event March 19th, mm-hmm. which will be a formal 
dinner night. Um, so tickets are fifty dollars a person. Uh, it's a it's going to be a very nice catered meal mm-hmm. with uh, a comedy act that night. Um, so oh, there's nice. entertainment. Okay. It's it's not going to be a high pressure. Uh, fundraising event per mm-hmm. se your fundraising is coming from the tickets i got gotcha. you so uh what who can't you know support a great cause mm-hmm. you know uh, to come and get fed and have great entertainment and just oh, yeah. have a great night to connect and network with people in our mm-hmm. community Absolutely. so that is you know so there's a few ways people can help yeah. you know and and just be a part of of what's going on right. so when, when is that one that is March 19th, 7 okay. p.m. at Center Point Apostolic Church on okay. New Las Casas right. Highway. Well, we'll post about that one as well. Yes, thank we you. Thank you. That, so. But uh, thank you again for that segue yes. to the capital campaign. Sure. You know, hear about it. <laughs> as I was listening, it, it just reminds me that there are so many ways for mm-hmm. people to get involved and participate. You know, it might be through your church. It, it might be coming to a journey home event. It might mm-hmm. be volunteering at our center. It might be through your business. Mm-hmm. Uh, we are in the process of building a new building. Um, the historic bottoms that yes. Gloria referred to yep. earlier uh, is part of a redevelopment district mm-hmm. in our city uh, in order to sort of expand our downtown area and, 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 and revitalize that area. And, um, and sort of because of that, um, things like our location Mm -hmm. uh, are going to change uh, over time. So we had to go out and take a look uh, for uh, a new opportunity to be able to do what we do and really to do it uh, in a facility that has enough capacity to Mm -hmm. do it well. Uh, We're blessed to have the building that we have uh, that uh, it's a, it's an old building. It's been around since just after world war II, and it's kind of broken down and (laughs) gosh, the plumbing doesn't even work half the time, but (laughs) you know, it's uh we're, we're blessed to have it, and yeah. a lot of good things have happened there. Mm-hmm. But just down the road, just less than a mile down Old Salem Road, okay. uh, toward the interstate, yep. uh, we are building a new 19,000-plus square foot right. uh, facility that will allow us the space to do what we do well. Mm-hmm. Um, things like feeding and closed closet and all those services, mm-hmm. they will continue, but we'll have additional area for, for working with uh, more clients, helping them move into housing and move forward. Uh, our um, health and mental health services will be expanded in the upstairs. We'll finally get to all be in the same building again. We've, yeah, right. we've had our administration split up over at First Baptist for a number of years yeah. now just because we ran out of space. Yeah. Uh, one of the uh, great elements of this uh, building, though, is that, you know, when you're working with a family with children and you're, you're working on getting them in new housing, or maybe getting some some new work lined up and getting things stabilized. You know, it doesn't just happen overnight Mm -hmm. that housing becomes available and they are miraculously able to pay for it and all those things. It really takes a few months. And in this new facility, we will have 10 units of interim family housing so that that those families with kids will have a safe place to be where we can work with them during that interim period. You know, they won't be at a CD motel. Mm-hmm. Uh, they won't be in a car. They won't be on the street. Mm-hmm. They, you know, oftentimes they're moving from couch to couch to couch, and yeah. kids are uprooted and disrupted mm-hmm. every every night. Uh, they will have a safe place to be during this process. And let me tell you, that is a great, great resource oh, uh, that will be coming to our community because right now there are only four rooms in this entire county that can do that, just no four. In the whole county. Oh gosh! And so, um, you know, it's a really needed, um, a really needed resource. Mm -hmm. And one of the uh, ways that that um, people could get involved in our capital campaign, obviously, and we have raised, we're right at five million Mm dollars of of roughly a six million dollar project. And so, obviously, Mm -hmm. making uh, donations to to that cause is really important. But you know, we have business people in our community in the construction industry. Um, and as we go to build that, that building, mm-hmm. they may want to bid 
on on doing some of that work oh, yeah. and be able to you know maybe discount or donate some of their services uh, that would actually help reduce the cost yeah. and that is an investment yes. in this community oh, that's going to outlive all of us yeah. you know and it will be serving people well well after we're gone yeah. and so there are many ways that people yeah. can get involved in and uh, you know if you're in the construction industry uh, and you're interested in in working with journey home to do this type mm -hmm. of a project um I would encourage you to call me personally. Right. You can find my information on our website. Mm -hmm. um, we, I'd love to sit down and have a cup of coffee. We will continue after this project to build additional housing programs throughout the community, yeah. uh, particularly for people in, with specific needs, groups with specific needs. So there are so many ways that people yeah. can get involved. Right. Right. You hear all that, you builders and contractors out there? <laughs> Calling you out now. All right. That's right. <laughs> that's right. We that's need awesome. them. We that's need right. Them. No, that's awesome. And then. Yeah, you know, outside of it, or the, you said the new building is nineteen thousand square feet. How big is the current building? So the current building, uh, counting all the floors, is mm -hmm. about seventy five hundred square feet. Wow, and, big difference. Uh, so, so part part of that uh, quite a difference. is just used for storage and things like yeah. that in the current building. Um, but it it is a yes uh, itty bitty wow. space. Wow. <laughs> so you're what two and a half times bigger now? Something like oh, that. That's, yes. Okay. Yes. Well, that's great. You know. Well, with, we'd love to come show off the new building when it's done or maybe the process and help me try and get the word out there of that, if that's okay with you guys. Absolutely. Okay. We'd love to host you and have you do that. Awesome. That's, wow. Thank you. Appreciate that. So, but, um, so you said earlier the website, so if people want to donate, they can just go straight to the website. Or straight you to the you website. Go, you got your number on the website? It is. It okay. is there. Love to sit down and have a cup of coffee and mm -hmm. just explore ways um, because we haven't even thought of all the ways people can invest right. in their yeah. community and service. It's always others. something new. That's yeah. right. Something new. Yeah. Or even just their time. Volunteers, right? Yes. Right. Like, you know, Absolutely. Exactly. Helping out. Yes. yes. Time is very valuable. So mm -hmm. helping out. Yes. That's mm -hmm. fantastic. So I'm a member of uh, Antioch Primitive Baptist Church mm -hmm. on North Spring Street. Okay. And we're exploring with our pastor the possibility of the different church auxiliaries mm -hmm. within our church to serve and continue to uh, participate and invest mm -hmm. in, in the mission yeah. of Journey Home. Oh, that's wonderful. All right. John, one thing yes, that sir. really tugged at my heart as a grandparent, as a mm -hmm. parent, <clears throat> is the family housing piece. Mm -hmm. and, and I think this is something that people don't realize. In our community, we have women's shelters, we have men's shelters. Mm -hmm. But if a mother comes and she has a 12-year-old son mm -hmm. and a daughter, just say, if she, she can't take her 12-year-old son to the women's shelter with her. So then she's forced with a difficult decision. Do oh. I take my daughter to the shelter and leave my son on the street tonight? Oh, no. So because there are no family housing options, this is oh. a critical need in our community. I never thought of that before. Yeah, oh, it's, it's, it's heartbreaking oh. because people are faced with those situations. Not oh, only have they been evicted or, or found themselves in a, in a difficult situation, and we may not can help them that night, but if mm -hmm. we've if we've got the family housing units, mm -hmm. you don't have to break up these families. You yeah. can take and put them in a in a safe place mm -hmm. until we can work through the process of yeah. finding them permanent housing. Yeah. But um, to me, that was very very moving and yeah. eye opening. Does that um, happen often? Or? Families are split up all the time, oh, and you know, no. um, let me let me. I, I want to. Or make sure that we understand it in the right context. No, yes, absolutely. You know, um, parents, typically single moms, mm -hmm. uh, in those situations, um, have to make difficult decisions. Mm -hmm. So it may be that that one of the children goes to grandma, grandpa over here, or or an aunt, or a cousin, or a friend, a family mm -hmm. friend, and you know, whenever children experience adverse events when when they experience trauma as children and being separated from your parent or your siblings that, mm -hmm. that those things are disruptive uh and they really um they really are predictors for some very not good things yeah in in the life as children grow up you know um, um school participation declines mm -hmm. academic achievement declines um health and mental health issues uh, yeah. tend to be on the rise as adults. Mm. Um, the uh, the propensity for becoming incarcerated uh, increases yeah. uh, as an adult. Adverse childhood experiences have lasting effect. Mm. And so, yes, uh, 
uh, parents have to make difficult decisions oftentimes and, and trying to make sure their children are yeah. taken care of. And But oh, many man. times we in the community uh, can come together mm-hmm. and we can help them um, put together solid plans that can, hey, maybe we can't always eliminate that disruption, but we can make it as short as we possibly can, mm-hmm. and we can help them get on a pathway that's going to be lasting success. You know, that that this time when they fix it, they're going to have some support to really get into good habits and really, you know, when, when, when the crisis hits the fan, mm-hmm. you're going to have somebody in your corner that can give you some objective counsel, that can encourage you, that can help you hold the pieces together and make good decisions. And, you know, that's the difference in doing it in a in an organized and systematic, structured way. Mm-hmm. You know, we can really create lasting change so that that experience they're having today mm-hmm. doesn't happen again in the future. Yeah. That's the key. Sometimes we, we, we can't immediately fix the problem. Mm-hmm. But once we fix it this time, hey, let's make sure that doesn't happen again yeah, yeah. in the future. Let's establish the right things mm-hmm. so that that family can then be stable in the future and minimize the Im- impact of what's happened today. Oh and I appreciate that you recognize the lack of stability in a young person's life has lifelong implications. Mm-hmm. It affects, as an educator, it impacts their ability to to read or not it impacts the high dropout rate Mm -hmm. particularly in the state of Tennessee so when when they're faced with a a crisis under any circumstances their capacity to learn and be their best selves Mm -hmm. it it becomes mitigated in so many ways Right. Yeah. Wow. Mm-hmm. Oh, I never thought of that before. Mm-hmm. Sorry, you just opened my eyes to something there. That's, woo. okay. Dang, we got heavy there for a second. Oh, <laughs> yeah. my gosh. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> this is one of the more heavier podcasts we've had in a while. So. No, but I really thank you guys for coming on and sharing all this. And I, I want to be cognizant of your time. I know you got to head out, but um, I feel like I could pick y'all's brain for a whole day on some of this stuff. Which, by the way, you got to come back. I'm <laughs> coming back. Oh, that would be I'd love to hear some stories about all that. Um, but uh, before we end, is there anything else you want to throw out there? You want to throw out your events one more time or where – Anything? Oh, mark your calendar, please, for Monday, March 4, Mm -hmm. on the MTSU campus in the Student Union Ballroom from 1130 to 1, Journey 24. We're looking forward to a successful event and tremendous support from our community. All right. Yes. How about yours one more time? Yes, March 19th, 7 o'clock. You can purchase the tickets on Eventbrite. Mm Mm-hmm. And um, buffet meal, comedy evening, it's going to be great to support a wonderful cause. All right. And Mr. Scott, if you would, uh, how can people find you, get more info, contact you, all that stuff? Absolutely. The very best way, and you'll find us on social media, but the very best way is just simply go to our website, Mm -hmm. www.lovegodserfpeople.org, and you will find all the information there. Um, Liz Kouser, who is our Director of Development and Marketing, uh, can can get you directed uh, to anything, and the best way to get to her is through the website. Right. Again, it's lovegodserfpeople.org. Great website, by the way. I love that name. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Well, there you go. Again, thank you all for coming in. Really thank appreciate you, it. Yeah, I can't thank you all thank enough. This was fantastic. So and you all heard that info. Go to the website. Donate. So there you go. But uh, for everybody watching, thank you as always. We appreciate it, and we'll see you on the next one.